So we're about halfway through the fall 2024 anime season, and I know I'm a little late getting this one out, but there's just a lot of great stuff, and I wanted to make sure I didn't put y'all on any mid. At this point though, I'm pretty confident about everything here. As usual, just because something isn't here doesn't mean it's not good. We've got a lot of returning big names this season and a lot of really good new stuff that's going under the radar. I had to leave off a few shows I really like because there's just so much diversity. But stay until the end for some honorable mentions. Also, if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe. I talk about all the latest seasonal anime as well as deep dive reviews, so enable alerts so you don't miss out on that. With that out of the way, let's get right into it. So starting us off at number 10 is a show I absolutely adore and look forward to every week. It is the definition of a toxic relationship, but damn, I love it. Yakuza Fiance. So this is kind of your usual arranged marriage gimmick, but with the very cool twist of it being two Yakuza leaders' grandchildren and all the baggage that comes with that. It's probably the first show I've seen that actually shows how dark the Yakuza gets. Like yeah, Kamicho Musume had a little bit of it, but this show actually gets into some really nitty gritty, crazy shit, like people getting their eyes poked out, beat to death, it gets wild. Yoshino and Kirishima also have this very crazy toxic dynamic where he's obsessed with her and she's just kind of manipulating him. The male lead is a literal walking red flag, but damn, it makes it fun. I'm sure it'll change eventually, but for right now, it's refreshing because we see him do a lot of wild stuff like hooking up with other girls and actually kind of acting like what you'd imagine a Yakuza would. My one complaint here is that it would make a lot more sense if they were in college instead of high school, but as y'all know, that setting sells in Japan, so it's whatever. This one gets a lot of criticism for his art, but honestly, I think it looks really great. And I think Yoshino is one of the prettiest girls of the year, so definitely a must watch for me. Next up at number nine is a show that's special to my heart for a couple of reasons. Firstly, Yuki is absolutely adorable and must be protected at all costs. And the other is that this show, Made Osama, is the first ever anime theme performed by Tricot, who are one of my favorite Japanese bands. Like I legit had my jaw on the floor when I got surprised by this OP for the first time. By the way, if you're in the punk or alt rock, I highly recommend checking out Japanese bands. Anyway, one of my fave tropes is the raised as a weapon and gradually learns emotions trope. And this show has executed that very well so far. I see a lot of Violet Evergarden both in Yuki's design, but also her backstory being raised as an assassin and gradually coming to know the joys of life thanks to the male lead in this series. What's also really cool is that both of the leads have emotional baggage and they kind of meet each other incidentally at the perfect time in their lives. Hitoyoshi's living on his own and he gets the whole wish fulfillment made gimmick, but I'm okay with it here because they do complement each other so well and narratively they just mesh. There's so many cute moments in this and I like how we're gradually learning more about the characters every episode as well as hints about Yuki's old job not being done with her. I actually forgot the Mysterious Maid show from Jahi's author a couple years ago, but this is basically that without the goon bait and frankly, much better written characters. Highly recommend it. Magical Girl fans, we are eating very good this season. There's like three shows this season and they're all great for different reasons, but there's only so much room on this list and I wanted to highlight Magi Lumiere in particular in this list because this show is just freaking amazing for a couple reasons. First of all, the production quality is stunning. The art might not look crazy, but the action and transformation sequences are actually really well done. The soundtrack is one of the best of the season, and the world it takes place in is just one of the coolest that we've seen for magical girls. We basically have a society where being a magical girl is not just normalized, but an actual big part of the economy, with entire corporations and conglomerates dedicated to taking on requests and solving them with magical girls. I'm really digging Kana and Hitomi's chemistry so far and seeing them take on quests with the unique magical system and of course the Yuri undertones. I also just find Kana to be a really relatable character. She's kind of gone from job to job dealing with shitty and abusive workplaces and she finally finds a place in Magi Lumiere that appreciates her for her and allows her to use her creativity and skills. You can always tell when a Maho Shoujo series is written by or aimed at men, but to be a shonen series, this one is really good so far, and it doesn't seem to be goon bait or anything like that, not too much fan service, and it's actually a really good story with some really cool characters. Highly recommend. At lucky number 7, we've got one of, if not the best, reverse isekai I've ever seen. Demon Lore 2099 has been amazing so far. I used to see this in the bookstore all the time and was always curious about it, but I just passed because I knew an anime was coming up for it. And so far, I'm not regretting that decision because the anime has been great. The simplest way I could sum it up is, imagine Devil is a part-timer, but in a cyberpunk futuristic setting where magic meets advanced technology. What I love about this, in addition to the setting, is the fact that the demon lore is somewhat of a great character. He's a good person who has done awful things in the past and has this opportunity in this new world to grow and be something different. 
One of his former subordinates has also betrayed him in this new world. So there's this whole plot going on with him taking on his former subordinate. I just really love this one. The characters are great. The story is interesting. There's cool technological and magical concepts. And like I said, frankly, it feels like a better devil is a part timer, which I think a lot of us felt a little disappointed with how that went down the stretch. Plus, Makina is one of the cutest girls this season. So there's a lot of reasons to check this one out. Highly recommend it as well. Suma Show is no doubt the most controversial show on this list, and it really has no reason to be. When the trailer for this dropped on Twitter, everyone got up in arms about it, calling it Pito Bay and Lolicon, and the usual casual racism towards Japan. And don't get me wrong, Japan does have a lot of crazy and frankly weird shit, but this is not one of them. This is probably the most emotional and powerful story of the season, as well as being generally wholesome. A guy's wife dies suddenly in a car accident and comes back years later in the body of a little girl to spend time with he and her daughter. Now I want to clarify, there is nothing inappropriate in this story. Yeah, the title and setup may sound a bit weird, but it's ultimately just about grief, accepting loss, and being able to move on. It's just done in a rather unique way. Unlike something like Freerun, where Freerun learns more about life after Himmel is gone and she can't talk to him, Keisuke can't actually talk to his wife and spend time with her. But there's this overwhelming feeling of dread because you just know that this can't last forever. It's both socially and physically impossible for them to ever be together again. So instead, it's like they're kind of helping each other out move forward. It's a beautiful story and I really recommend going in with an open mind. There's some real family drama and just downright painful moments, but it's the sort of pain that you need to grow in life. And bringing us into the top five is the biggest surprise this season for several reasons. First of all, Mecha Ude has a Senaren and Sawano OP, which is the best this season by a mile. A Sawano and Yamamoto soundtrack, making this the first they've done since I believe kind of the Great Sea. But of course, they did 86 together and they're my goats, so I was really excited just to see that. But maybe even more impressive than that is that this show is nearly a decade in the making. It started as a Kickstarter campaign back in like 2017, and it's finally come to fruition as a full TV anime. I'm so happy for everyone involved because it's been amazing so far. The characters merge with these sentient robot-like arms called Mecha Ude, and there's this whole conspiracy unfolding with these various organizations kind of trying to use the machines for their own nefarious purposes. You could tell it was inspired by and feels like a trigger anime. The action scenes are kind of on the short side because of the budget, but man, the ones we do get look absolutely amazing. And that Sawano soundtrack in the background, oh my goodness. This show is really good. I've been pushing it on Twitter now for the past few months, and I really want more eyes on it because this is just such a passion project and it shows. The characters are really fun. It's got a cool art style, a surprisingly dark story at times, and they're not afraid to kill people off. If you like mech stuff or Studio Trigger, or like me, you just like Sohano's music, you'll love this. Now let's be honest, you can't talk about this season without talking about Don to Don, and for good reason. It is amazing. Y'all have heard about it by now, so I'm not going to go over it too much. But just some key takeaways so far for me. The story hasn't been the strongest. The characters definitely make this in my opinion. That might change as we get further in, so don't be scared off there. Okurun and Momo's relationship is really fun to watch though. I love how they banter, fight, and at the end of the day, when either one of them is in a tough situation, they're going to be there for one another. The other thing is the production value. I had no doubt that Science Sorrow would crush this. I loved Azokin and a lot of their other stuff, and they surpassed even my expectations here. I mean, this is really just a spectacle to watch. It's so chaotic and all over the place, but it is fun as hell. The Fooly Cooly comparisons are apt in my opinion. It's one of those shows that's more of an experience rather than something you can describe, so definitely check it out. I'm so happy that Takahashi Rumiko has been getting these remakes lately. First, Yurusei Yatsura, which was a joy to watch for the last two years, and now Ranma 1 half. And I gotta say, as someone who loved Urusei Yatsura, I think Ranma is better by a mile so far. Again, like I said with Urusei Yatsura, when that first dropped, you look at something like Ranma and it might seem generic at first, but that's because Takahashi created a lot of modern rom-com tropes, so you can't punish the series for being an innovator. You have what's now a common setup in terms of an arranged marriage and male and female lead moving in together, but it's so well done here. Ranma and Akane fight like cats and dogs, but at the end of the day, they'll make up and realize how important the other is. Ranma's sex change gimmick is also something that series like Tola of Rue would implement years later, but this is kind of the OG, so it's pretty cool to see that. And unlike Urusei Yatsura, there's actually a proper story going on here, so every episode is advancing the plot, and it feels connected instead of being monster of the week like Urusei Yatsura. I'm having so much fun with this one, and I like how it deals with femininity and Akane kind of growing into her own person, being comfortable in her own skin. 
it was wild to me to learn that she actually wasn't very popular in the original, but I'm loving her here. It's also great that they got Inuyasha's soundtrack composer to work on this, so it just takes me back to my childhood every time I watch these episodes. So from one Netflix show to another, also with a live-in relationship, we got Blue Box. This has been hyped for so long, and I can say as of episode 7 or 8 or whatever we're on now, it has definitely lived up to the hype. It's brilliant in every sense. The show looks gorgeous. The characters are emotionally intelligent and act like normal human beings. But I think the best part of Blue Box is how it focuses on the character's development as athletes and people rather than just the romance. Like obviously romance is a big part of the story, but that's not all there is to it. These are really talented people who want to be the best in their individual fields, but the romance is like a bonus or extra motivation for them. It kind of hurts to watch though because you have two genuinely amazing girls in this series and I haven't read the manga, but it's very obvious that Chinatsu is going to win here, so it's a little depressing because Hina would be the best girl in any other series. She's so adorable, she's athletic, she's loyal, she's a great friend, but you just know it's never going to work out here. For me, I do actually like Chinatsu a little more because she's a hooper and she got that Mamba mentality. First to the gym every day, last to leave. But I'm really looking forward to seeing everything play out in this one. Every episode is such a blast to watch. And like I said, you got two of the best girls of the year. Can't lose here. So the best show this season without a doubt for me is Orb. I knew it from the very first episode and damn near two months later, my answer has not changed. This is immaculate. It's crazy how we've got so many two core masterclasses in the last year. Freerun, Kusuria, Yatagrasu, and now this. Orb is cool because it's a grounded historical series taking place in early Renaissance Europe when heliocentrism was still considered heretical and you could actually get killed for studying it. So if you don't know what heliocentrism is, basically for most of human history, people thought that the earth was the center of the universe. Heliocentrism is of course the theory that the sun is the center instead. So back in those days, you could have actually got killed for practicing and teaching and studying that. So Orb follows several protagonists across the years as they advance research related to that. So much credit to the author because he's not afraid to kill characters off and it makes every episode very tense and keeps you on the edge of your seat. The fact that this research has to be done in secret and you have these inquisitors or whatever you want to call it from the church who go around checking for heretics, it's a wild ride. It's very nerve wracking, but man, is it fun. And as someone who majored in physics and wanted to be an astronomer as a kid, I really appreciate seeing a genuine down to earth historical science series like this. I love every show on this list, but if you take anything away from this, the three shows that you need to watch are really the top three shows on this list. I think if you're on a limited time span because of school or work, definitely check these three out. All right, real quick, there were a few shows that I couldn't quite justify over the other shows in the top 10, but I still love them and want to give a little honorable mention to. First up is tying the knot with an Amagami sister. I thought this one was going to be complete goon bay, honestly, because of the people who were hyping it up when it got announced. But it's actually a really competently written rom-com about a guy who goes to live at a shrine with these three shrine maiden sisters. The girls are actually all pretty good characters. I could do without the youngest one being in the equation because of the age gap, but the chemistry with the lead and the girls is so good. They're emotionally intelligent and the MC acts like a normal dude. Like he's one of the few male leads where you're like, yeah, I could actually see this guy having a harem. I love the art style and I don't know, I just really like this one. The story is actually pretty emotional too with all the characters working through some trauma and grief and how the MC is studying to become a doctor. Like everybody's kind of got their own thing going on. It's not just your usual fan service rom-com. So I'm really enjoying it so far. Most Notorious Talker was so hard for me to leave off this list because I love it so much, but I couldn't put it over Yakuza Fiance or Maido Sama or any of the other ones on this list when it comes down to it, but I definitely recommend people check it out. It's an amazing dark fantasy series. If you like main characters who really don't give a fuck and aren't afraid of being bad people, giving people what they deserve, you'll love this one. It borders on edgy versus being genuinely badass at times. Definitely a lot of messed up stuff in this one, but I like seeing a main character who isn't a pushover and will stand up for themselves at the expense of others. Noel isn't extremely overpowered, but he's smart as hell, and if you cross him, it will be the last thing you do. Whew. So we talked about a lot today. This season has so much good stuff. I couldn't talk about everything. I feel really bad for leaving my villainous and show Jose shows off, but I just couldn't fit everything in here. We'd be talking all day. But of course, you can follow me on Twitter or my anime list where I do write ups for most of the seasonals. Let me know down below what y'all are watching and loving so far this season, though. And of course, be sure to like and subscribe for more anime content. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and I'll see y'all on the next one.